Okay, thank you. So with that, we'll get started on the strategic plan. Uh, you have three of the strategic planning committee members here today, Carl, Chris, and Desi. Uh, Chuck is not here. Uh, so we had a, a conference a few weeks ago um, with the strategic planning committee, and we did agree that we're going to follow the situation target path model. Um, yeah, it's not working. Uh, so with the situation target path model, we want to understand where we are, where we want to go, and ultimately how do we get there. Um, so part of that process is a SWOT analysis. Um, the SWOT analysis, it, it covers uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And I'll get into a little bit what each one of those means. Um, but part of what we, what we wanted to do was stress the importance of engaging with the membership as we develop the strategic plan. So the purpose of, of being up here today is to um, have basically a brainstorm session of the chapters, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Uh, so strengths are areas that we currently do well in. Weaknesses are areas that the chapter could improve in. Opportunities are uh, external factors that could be leveraged to help um, increase um, the value of this chapter and threats are, are potential issues that um, could impact this chapter down the, down the road in the future. Um, so do we have any questions before we get started? I guess maybe we should start off too by saying, to, I mean, does everybody know that we, are, we were looking at the strategic plan or does anybody want a, a history of kind of where we're, why we're doing this? So just to give you some background, every year we get a new president and, and sometimes a new board. And what many of us found was that we were like, like leadership in any organization, we were changing directions sometimes. And sometimes that change in direction was minor and just a little bit off from the previous person. But we've been noticing this struggle that you know sometimes a president can come in and take our chapter a different direction. And, in our organization that we thought it was slowing us down. Uh, it was making it very confusing from a membership standpoint. It's like, what are we doing this year? And, and sometimes the transition, since some of the leaders are the same faces, it, it was sometimes it was confusing as to when we transition from one leadership model to another leadership model. So the idea that we came up with a couple years ago, and thanks to Carl, we're actually, he's actually taking it and going with it and leading us on it, is we want to make a strategic plan so that as presidents or boards come in that we stay focused at least with a long-term vision instead of this annual changing of direction and we think it's going to provide more stability for the organization and allow us to make more long-term decisions that uh, and keep us going in one direction the the purpose is though is that in this plan we're going to have long-term goals and short-term goals so we're not going to have and we're, we're not going to have the, this isn't going to be a one-time make it and, and go this way. We're always going to have built-in uh, checks and balances to make sure that where we think we're going is the right way to go and, and that we're meeting the mark or maybe we need to change direction a little bit. So we'll have those kind of adjustment abilities built into it. But this right here is the foundation of that. And it would be real easy for the four of us, Scott, Carl, myself, uh, Chris, to just sit there and make up a plan for you guys. But that's the thing we complain about APCO International about the most, is that you have some people in a boardroom making the decisions for the organization, and it's not starting down here at the grassroots. So I want to kind of feed you that, or leave you that seed, plant that seed, because the involvement that you guys give us, the things that we throw on the board here, I mean, this is it. This is, this is your guys's deciding how this thing's going to grow. And it's really important that we all throw something into this game. I was just going to give you one of the You want to you want to throw it down first? I'll give you a threat. Well, be, uh, before we before we do that, so um, if you if you don't uh, if you have more thoughts than what you're able to discuss during this session today, we're going to have other opportunities as well. Um, we're, we're carving out a few minutes in each of the afternoon sessions, and we're also going to uh, develop and send a survey to all of the membership, so even those that aren't here today have a chance to provide input. And we're looking for input 
from the technical side, the operational side, and the commercial side. So we want we want today and, and the SWOT analysis in general to be a well-rounded report from all aspects of the membership. Um, and, and ultimately, this information will lead us towards our goals and objectives uh, that we will detail out in the strategic plan that we'll measure throughout the years. So with that, Tim. I think it is a changing board, how often it changes, what direction it goes in. Because you're right, in the past we have had massive changes, massive direction changes, and that's a threat to the organization. So is that a weakness or a threat? Or to call it's it, is that a It's a threat. Yeah, it, it can be viewed as either one. It will put it as a threat. So what would I title that uh, changing leadership? Uh, Lack of continuity. And I mean, this this is going to help address that threat. Absolutely. So, so let's jump over to strengths. Thanks, Tim. Let's jump over to strengths. Um, sometimes it's easier to start there. Um, does anybody have any any initial thoughts? What else? So this is a brainstorming session. There's no wrong answer, so let's just keep the ideas coming. So speak up. It's the, the diversity of the members. I mean, you have every faction, basically, of public safety. Um, yes. That's... Mike. This one is a strength and weakness. We have 530 or some odd members, but we rarely get more than 50 to 70 people in the field. How do we, so the strength is we have a very large membership. And we even have even a larger mailing list of about 1,500 that we send invitations out to to try and attract them here. Right. So that's very, that's strong on the strength side. But on the uh, threat side or an opportunity is how do we get more of them to participate not every month, but maybe two or three, four times a year participate. Yeah, and Mike brings up a good point. Sometimes we do have a strength and a weakness, and, and ultimately this information will be compiled into a, a plan that will address all of those. Um, I think one of our strengths is, is we have people that commit to the board for either two, four, or five years if you're going up through the through the steps, the vice president, president elect step. Those people are committed, so they have a, a groundbreaking as to being introduced as to what is going on, and they are learning more as they go along to be able to lead it as we go through. And we can help teach those that want to come on board to take those positions to help them as they move forward also. So I think the, the four or five year chain that you have being involved with the board continuous through those years is an advantage for us. Good. I would put down, uh, I think our monthly meetings are uh, a positive, uh, a strength. Yeah, absolutely. Got another one. John? We'll wait for him to stop and just keep rolling. That's, uh, okay. Our involvement at the national level, uh, for instance, are 4.9. Chair, subcommittee chair, Franny's on the committee, I'm on the committee. I think there's more NAPCO members on those committees than any other chapter, and that includes CPRA, which themselves have several members on those committees. We're, we seem to be involved more than any other chapter in the national issues. Okay. Do we have one back there? step to somebody else and get an answer to a 
questioning me. And that's extremely important. Good. I think um, we're seeing more and more of the involvement of the community and the No, I think uh, even the commercial side, the fact that we have such an active commercial side is, is important as well. And I think that'll go along with the third table talk. You know, yeah. You've got that involvement with the commercial and everybody else. The commercial from this chapter is involved nationally on the, yeah. on the CAC, so we're very involved with the international. So your chapter involved nationally. They pay attention to that. You know, from Desi being on the executive council and the commercial side of the, of the CAC and the CCAM for this chapter, and how all of we have members on APCO committees. That's noticed by DC. They they know we're very active, and they are uh, very uh, complimentary and supportive. Of that. This is kind of the slide that you decide that. I've been advocating with anybody I work with that you should be a member and come to meetings. And a couple of the agencies just flat out, well, the captain won't let me do that. And it's not perceived as important to be in the industry. And a lot of the smaller agencies need to, to be to find a way to have their members be here. So we need to really step up the improvement to get uh, management to let one of their staff come to the meetings. I think we would benefit even the smallest tiny agency to have somebody show up regularly at the meetings. Um, and on the strength side, knowing, you know, for example, I just chatted with John Lemon about a, a possible thing. I know who he is. I know many of the other people here, we all know each other. So if there's a, an issue, we know who to talk to. So the social part is important, but we really need to pump up the uh, 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 recruitment to get more active members and get non-members active. So touching on what Bill said, one of our strengths would be networking. So it may be strength or a weakness? Strength. 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 That's a strength. Yeah. Yeah. Bill said that. Huh? Oh, I can see. I know I can see. Yeah. I can see. I think looking into the opportunities, one of the best opportunities that, that we have as, as this organization here from Northern California is we move around to different locations through the Bay Area, up here in the Valley, through Sacramento. I think that gives us the ability to some of these agencies that maybe if we can get to them and, and get their membership involved that maybe they don't make every meeting but when we're in that area as if we're going to be in monterey or up in moran or, or up here in stockton we see different people that are able to come to these areas because it's a lot closer for them and it helps to get through i think if we can get that information out a little bit more that or sooner that let these agencies know that hey Two months from now, you know we're going to be in Monterey. Let them know that. Maybe they can get get some of their staff involved that are here and can come down to that one. Yeah, we should put that schedule on our website. Yeah, CPRA, you can look on their website and find they out have, where they're They have a be. city for every month of the year. Yes. You know, one of the things that... I'm sorry. Um, you know, when we've had the, the meet and greet in Santa Cruz, uh, that went over really well. It was different people showed up and they were after work. Maybe in coordination with our monthly meeting somewhere, we do a meet and greet that night. Uh, air and wine or something there. Maybe that kind of like social. Like the way you think. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were with me in San Diego. Oh, but it was really. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't there. No, no. <laughs> so, you know, maybe uh, some kind of a meet and greet. Uh, then they'd see that 
they're n normal people and maybe they get something out of it by coming from five to seven at night instead of trying to be there. A little bit working morning. off the books. Yeah, instead of trying to be there in the morning where they won't let them off work, maybe they can come from seven to nine, seven to five to seven, five to eight, whatever. Jack. As well as get it out in plenty of time yeah. so people can plan accordingly. I don't know if we do this, but we're going to meet monitoring in September. Right? Is there an outreach committee that would notify the director of communications in Monterey County, should they have one, and the operations section and IT section that the meeting is going to take place in their county that we could accept? Members or guests from that county to come see what, what, what a meeting is. That we're going to bring people, but that's yeah, yeah that, could, that could be an opportunity. Yeah, I think yeah. I think we captured your host agency um, increased participation from local members. True, but I'm talking about outreach. Like, I want I want to host something in Ukiah, so I want Greg Klavich notified. I want the director of Emergency services for that county notified by APCO's board or somebody in a, in, a, in the management here to say we're going to meet at such and such a venue, bring bring any APCO members that you have and guests to that meeting and see what it's all about, right? It might be to the council. Or that. Yeah. 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 And then anyone who could go to it and pull from those regions. That's one thing. Angela, maybe you can answer this question since he's talking about that. We have a listing of, of, how, of who all of our members are. Do we have accessibility on our website to make contact with them other than just a mass email going to them about our meetings? Oh, I'm sure. Working with Jim, he could probably. Parse out the, uh, the email list by county seat, maybe, and send out a personal invite that way to those people. Okay. Get the member in the area to go. Oh. Okay. I think some of that can be on us too. If you yeah. if you know of people in an area where a meeting is being hosted, take it upon yourself to invite them. And then they can send out the personal invite. Going in and out. Yeah, I think that's a good advantage. I, I think it's uh, ideal to have the county know you're coming to their county, but the adjacent counties, since there's 58 in the state, <laughs> how many do we have in Northern California? Uh, adjacent counties being aware that we're coming here, that's an easy travel. Uh, I know that Alpine County is going to have a tough time going to Monterey. But boy, this is an easy trip. So that was one of mine was engaging. We are, even though we're regional, our region is huge. From the Oregon border to Bakersfield, you know, to Kern County is a huge area. So I think that's one of our threats too. I mean, we don't often go to Fresno, Kings, Tulare, Visalia, that area there, Kalinga. It's all our area, but we don't really go that area. So maybe one of the threats is having such a big uh, Mm -hmm. Geographic. Well, that's a weakness. That's a weakness. Yeah, yeah. Too large. Too large. Too large. 
Is there a way we can break our membership list down by where they're located so we can see how many people are from that area? And maybe we should have a meeting once a year in Fresno. We'd capture Visalia and all of those areas down there. Uh, so that's if the there's only four members from that whole area, it may not be worth it. But, well, we used to have joint north-south meetings, too, in places like Visalia. I think bring that point that I mean, John was making that originally APCO, way back when, was established, particularly local, was to work on regulatory issues, technical issues, you know, licensing, and that sort of thing. But we've evolved, and, and APCO was strongly influential in developing the APCO 16 standard, the APCO 25 standards, and that sort of thing that was done nationally and as John said and we had uh, with you not only the business but on the national regional planning committees and, and memberships and that that are were well represented nationally. But what I really like what I think is a, a strength is now we're starting to get into the operational side. We break out in our afternoon sessions. It's not just a technical issues that we sit on these committees and do licensing and that sort of thing, but you get more of the NINA side, if you would, of the South working on operational uh, communications, uh, dispatch centers, that sort of thing. Right, and I think as we discuss more operational-centric issues like the meeting in Roseville where there was both technical and operational, I think we had around 18 or so operational members that stayed after for the afternoon meeting. So and, and I think it's both a, a strength and, and a weakness and opportunity. That, that's where that starts to come together. Well, I like to see the chapter growing in that direction because it involves more people rather than just the radio checkies as it originally was. Kind of, but now we're getting into more of the operational side and what actually happens between dispatch and receiving. All right, you guys are doing great. Keep you got coming. Two hands so, yes. Just to piggyback on what we um, had to say, there's a very low PSAP um, uh, yeah, representation. For some reason, I can't remember that word today. I don't know why. But um, just the weakness is everything's very technical, which is great because it gives us a lot of information, but nobody really considers the operational impacts as far as the people that are going to be using the equipment. So just a suggestion with, you know, the technical part of it, maybe just set aside 10, 15 minutes to kind of discuss the impacts it's going to have on the center. Um, threats are, so threats are really, um, factors that are outside of the organization. So like if the FCC did something that would impact this organization or if National did something that would impact this chapter, that's more of the threat is something that's external to the chapter itself. You were raising your hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, basically, um, the same thing they were saying is promote to the users, the actual users, so that they're more involved and they know that they have people participating in this type of um, membership so that they see the value and they're more supportive of it within either their city or their county. Because if you can start at the very bottom and the users know that it's important to have people there, then you'll get more promotion of it and it can build. Maybe agencies. Slash agencies. Great. We need uh, volunteers to 
be more active in the monthly meetings or in the preparing for the monthly meetings. Right now we have a small core of people that pretty much do most of the work. And I, we, we definitely need some more people. Now, Carl has stepped up this year and he's doing a great job. But we need some more people, uh, even if it's mailing out letters or emailing out letters to people in a geographic area that uh, we want to attract to come to a meeting that we're going to have close by. Uh, we do need, we need more volunteers. So people the threat step would be, up and volunteer some of their time. The threat would be lack of support from agencies who have those highly active members. Right. Is that or a weakness? I, I think that's more that's not the case. That's more yeah. Lack of a membership activity or involvement. We need to work out. Yeah, I think that I think participation by members other than just the board is a weakness. Yeah. You have. I mean, the board's done great. I, I know. I know you guys worked with you. And it's wonderful. And I and I understand it takes you know it can take four years or so as you can up it, but need more participation from the rest of <laughs> the rest of the membership. More people to step in, more people to step up. There are there are other things that can be done. You always seem to have the same four members. And that's always. it. You, you always have the same people doing taking care of whatever needs to be taken care of. You need other people to step in there too. <laughs> Another thing, I was, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Steve. Okay. One of the things that I've, I've noticed all these years that I've been involved with NAPCO is we're very east west centric. We're either in the Bay Area or in the Sacramento area. And I know that you know we talk about growing the organization. Well, we haven't, we haven't really reached out to the north or south. Reading is this area that we think is on a map somewhere and nobody knows how to get there. You go down to Fresno, there were times in a distant past where we would have meetings down in Fresno. And, you know, you, you talk about uh, agencies feeling a little bit disconnected from APCO. Well, if you don't have a presence, they will consider you not to really be anybody worthy of talking to, much less putting money into. Because if I'm gonna, if I'm in ready, I'm either going to be going to San Francisco area or I'm going to be going into the Sacramento area. Now, I know that's where the majority of people are. If you do your account like Mike was talking about, you're going to find the majority of the membership is Sacramento and San Francisco. Well, if you want to grow, you got to go north and south. Uh, and I've also I've talked to Joel and we about this. They, they, they've talked several times about how on several different programs from the state, you know, they're up there on the north, in the north coast areas. But those people, you know, they're the ones who really need them. They could benefit the most from some of our training programs. And yet, because they're so far removed, they don't even recognize APCO as being there for us. So I really think this is an area that needs to be looked at. This is definitely to me, a, a major weakness with the organization. So I'm going to follow up on the comment I made about the captain won't let me go. Uh, and this is over in your opportunity world. What we need to find a way is to get the people with stars or bugles on their shoulders to say to their people, I want one of you at the APCO meeting next month. And so somehow we need to reach out to sheriffs and police chiefs and fire chiefs and dispatch center managers, the very high level of management, and let, convince them that APCO is a benefit to their organization so they will make the resources available so their staff can show up. I think the, the captain will let me go as an excellent example of, of somebody who doesn't understand. And so we need to stop talking to ourselves because we understand people in this room understand that's why we're here but we need to get the bosses the very high level you know maybe go to your chief who goes to the chief meetings or the sheriff meetings which they have and have and, and maybe have try to get 
APCO people to present at their meetings saying why it's important. But if the boss says attend, we'll have much better attendance. Yeah, and I think that ties into that some people are unaware of, of NAPCO's benefits and, and um, advantages of, of participating. So this, a lot of this ties in. The topics have to be really relevant to public safety you know, as technologies go on. So I don't, just a personal opinion, if I could talk to my captain and my administrative staff and say, look, this is the technologies that are coming in. We are going to be talking about how it's going to impact the PSAP, what it's going to mean to the public, and um, what it's going to mean to them. You know, I think that that's going to be huge. It's got to be relevant. It can't just be, well, you know, we all get together and the batteries look really cool, but we're not in the market to buy a battery. So, and these are a wealth of knowledge. Um, I can get a wealth of knowledge here, but um, yeah, the impact is follow up on that. Yeah, that's a good point. We need to be able to stay in a, in, in a nutshell. This is not a topic we're going to be talking about. This is something we've been kicking around in our agency. That's what they want to hear. I don't want you to just go to network. Uh, you can do that over the phone, couldn't you? Can you just call that expert on that? Can you look it up on their website? To be able to say, this is the takeaway. at t is going to be speaking. What are they going to be speaking about? OK, you didn't make it to the meeting. Where's their presentation? Can we download that PDF of that? So that's the kind of stuff you need to be able to give to your higher ups to say why I should be there. Yeah, so and, that, that's interesting. That's though. Covered in Let me ask you this: do you, do you think that having the videos or the handouts on the website is a deterrent? Then, hey, you could look it up afterwards. You don't need to attend. It could be a deterrent, but uh, it might sell the point that had you been there, you'd have a chance to talk with that expert afterwards to get in more depth. Desi, I'll take just one second. Jim is deliberately putting a 90-day delay on the videos so that they are not instantly available. Interesting. There's, there's two things about the website. There's a strength and a weakness here. But the, the weakness on the website is that, for example, and I know it's there, but if I'm trying to find out from a calendar what's happened six months ago, where did we have our meeting six months ago, it's gone. That information's not there. At least I can't find it. Now, so I'm, I'm thinking that if you had, a, you know, maybe a way to restructure the, the website is put down a calendar portion to this thing, and the other part would be to uh, but yeah, an archive I think would be nice too. The, the, the other thing that is, we've got to do some spell checking here. Alameda is improperly spelled at the latest uh, website. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's just the website needs some help. Yeah, I agree with that. That's what I was going to say. I think Jim does a great job, but. I think the job is almost bigger than what one person can do yeah. on a part-time basis. Uh, you know, it's not a full-time job, but I know that Jim, he's got regular duties other than trying to be a webmaster. If you go into the seven and 800 portions, the links within the website, I mean, they're woefully out of date. Mm -hmm. uh, they need to either be dropped or they need to be brought up to date. And, uh, and we often, tell people you ought to go to the website, and yet that website should be attractive and it should be up to date and it should be something that gives good value to the person that visits the site. Yeah, and that ties into your point about being able to market that to people in your agency in order to get, um, to demonstrate value to go the next time. You stole my thunder, by the way. Okay. <laughs> just just a moment. I, I, I've seen your hand go up and down. That's okay. So, uh, and just to piggyback on the website issue, the, this particular meeting, uh, because I've missed the last couple, um, had three possible locations listed for it. And I was trying to schedule my travels from San Diego to Alaska to, is it going to be Sacramento, Oakland, San Francisco, you know, where, where am I going? And that was as recently as a week and a half ago. Okay. So that's always been my pet peeve is from a from the commercial vendor standpoint because I know a number of us at least used to come in from other areas booking flights and so forth we want to support the chapter and 
when we don't live in the area and we do have to fly in, we need to book as far out in advance to be able to support it, you know, financially, uh, be here and, and still look after our own business bottom line. That we're not paying exorbitant fares, you know, to get here yeah. last minute information. So what would be a good heads up, a three month schedule, a six month schedule? Well, whatever, yeah, whatever happened to the old schedule where we could predict 12 months on, I'm looking at the calendar here and it says TBA for August and September. Now, if, if as, as an example, um, you know, and I'm, I'm a firm believer in sharing best practices. The CPRA website has everything booked out for the, for the year. We rarely have any changes to location. We have to change a sponsor every now and then that happens, things, you know, things fall out. But the locations are known you know, for the following year. And, and we, we've, been, we've been doing that in this chapter. And I say we because I do hold a dual, dual membership. So you know, we've, we've done that for a while where we knew 12 months in advance. We knew we were going to be in Roseville this month. We're going to be in you know, South Bay the next and so forth. So we're able to, to do that coordination. But over the last year, year and a half, I see it's been, it's been really loose and again, it's been difficult to do that coordination of logistics. So hearing a couple of the comments and, and just tagging on to what you just said, so a couple of things. I think an opportunity, um, and it comes top of mind, I sit on the advisory board um, at Fresno State University for seven years. So an opportunity might be for the organization to reach out to the CSU system in California. Um, it's interesting, in a lot of the meetings you have strategic CSUs right in the backyard where the meetings are and or one CSU where the headquarters is. And the strength might be for the CSUs to offer interns. There's a lot of students that are really wanting to build their resume. And um, an intern might be a great opportunity for them to push email. I think that's what Mike was saying, to have somebody help administratively to push email, to help with a news flyer. And then also interns are very great at web building and web design. So I think that might be an opportunity that could turn a weakness into a strength if they partner with the, the universities. Scott, are we? Um, Jeff here. I, uh, you know, in a marketing kind of perspective, I divide my customers up by what they do. So uh, there's county people, there's fire, there's police, there's law enforcement, there's state. And when I come to the meetings, we have, for instance, we have really good county uh, attendance here. We got Joel, we got Paul, we got you. Um, so I don't know that we look at our membership so much as, okay, so we have the county level, then we have the sheriff level, then we have, you know, local law enforcement, police, or fire, or and Cal Fire, and then we have state. Now we always, you know, Tim's always here from Fish and Wildlife, but I never see anybody here from Parks and Rec. So does anybody really look at this thing and say, okay, we're strong in these spots, but we're weak in these, and, and the people that come here want to associate with people that are in similar industries, right? So the fire guys want to talk about the same problem they're having with other fire guys. Same with county, want to talk with county. So how is there a way that we can, you know, look at what we've got, see where our strengths and weaknesses within the categories of people that are attending so that when they come, they go, this meeting is going to be a great meeting for sheriffs or fire or for state or, I don't know, it's just, to me it seems like that's how I've always looked at my markets in a certain way. So can we look at our membership that way and try to cater to our where we're weak, if that makes sense. And you know, I don't know where this fits, but I mean, that was a really good point fact that you know one thing that I know that's burdened me and I know Scott and anybody that's been in leadership here a while is it's it's almost become so labor and t time intensive because we do have monthly meetings that you know as soon as we're done with this meeting we're already recruiting for the next meeting and planning the next one out and and um, you know so wh while I well, I said earlier the strengths was our monthly meeting. For those in leadership, 
it's almost become a monthly burden too that I'm I'm constantly I mean your points your points taken I don't have anybody I don't have enough bandwidth to do that and and yet we need that in order to stay relevant. I mean what if we had a meeting to cater to Cal Fire, I mean, how many fire departments do we have here? Not many. We have lots of law enforcement. We don't have any fire guys here. We have a few county agencies that support fire, but my whole family's from the fire industry, four generations long. Is, are any of them ever here, or any of the guys that I know in the fire industry here? They're not, but they should be, or somebody should be represented, but we don't cater to try and grab that part of our Steve's volunteer. Well, no, no, well I have in the past. The observation I wanted to make here was that, and we talked about outreach. In the past, when we had to set up meetings, and we were trying to plan it out 12 months in advance, part of the 12 month planning, which we'll do in January, maybe December. Uh, this year it'll be October. October, yeah. Well, anyway, it was to do an outreach and say, hey, uh, this agency in well, I'll give you an example. Yellow County. We were approached and they said, can you set up a meeting for this month, six months from now? And the members of APCO would say, yeah, we can do that for you. And we would take care of arranging those meetings. Now, if it's become so centralized over the years where it's the board and it's the president or it's the leadership of APCO who has to take on that burden, you guys need to start offloading some of those responsibilities and, and assigning or asking people in certain regions of this area to have to you know to handle putting together where we're going to meet dealing with the catering and you know making sure that the information is well the the program is in place okay? and, I, and i just don't I, I i have a sense that we've been drifting away from that over the last several years because there was, there was a meeting in Yolo County that occurred uh, about three years ago where we actually had it in, in Woodland twice in one year. And the first one was handled by Yika, but the second one was handled by the uh, body of, uh, of well, by the leadership. By the chapter. And, and I really think that was kind of a, that was, we're drifting away from getting other people involved. How, how do you train people around here if you don't give an opportunity to put on a program, if you if you guys are doing all the work and you, you know, you're saying, well, we need to get help from other people, where, where are you going to draw those people from? It's the same old people doing the same old work all over, over and over again. And I don't think that's really, you know, you have to you have to start training from the groups up. I don't. I think we've been moving away from that. So I think uh, does this capture delegate monthly meeting logistics? Doing the planning this year, Steve, in October, so we'll have all of the 12 months meetings planned well in advance. Well, was that also something that happened this year? Um, sort of. <laughs> well, see, that's what I mean by drifting away from. Yeah, some of the it wasn't completely done this year, but we're moving back to that uh, so we can post it on our website. It's done, so we do it. The problem is we end up with moving locations. So you have a location that's set, but then for whatever reason, something's just so. We were set in January. We had everything set. We switched this with Roseville. That was done. We've had this location for months on this day. I worked with Pamela. You guys got that set up for us because we originally were going to be here in June, but we switched it. It worked out well. But so we're on this over the next two months. The website says that two It needs to it needs the website, right. they need the format, the yeah, link to redesign of the website. Right. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's not dated at this point. I mean, it was great. Yeah, four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. To Ken's point, I know Jim's been really busy. Not excuses, but just where we are. Yeah, I'm not buying Jim. No. Oh, yeah. Well, and the problem is it's a limited number of resources, and you hit on it. The board's doing a lot. And, and coming off the WRC, yeah, right now they probably are. And that's probably a lot more. And I think that's what this is going to identify. And I'm excited. We do have quarterly board meetings, and we're going to have another one, I think, in late September. Um, we'll have an opportunity to really sit down and have a full day workshop talking about all of this. Um, yeah, this process this isn't easy. This is looking in the mirror and this looking, at, looking at this great stuff. Great. So this is, this is, this is one great. One of the things that held us up this year is WRC. Oh, that was we had to put an enormous yeah. amount of effort into that. Actually, some things got sidetracked. 
off the rails. That's an enormous uh, uh, project. Well, I, I think you kind of hit upon it, though, when you said that after 10 years, it's time to let somebody else take on yeah. your job. Yeah. I really think that we're seeing a lot of burnout from a lot of good people, and I think we need to start bringing in some new blood. And I, and I don't see any mechanisms in place here to develop new blood. You volunteer? <laughs> He's volunteering. <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you for the input. Uh, so, like I said, there's going to be a couple more opportunities for additional input. Uh, afternoon meetings, frequency, and operations. There will be some time for additional input. And then shortly, uh, probably early next week, um, everyone in this room and everyone belonging to the chapter will receive an online survey. Um, it's basically just, again, brainstorming different ideas. So, if there's Anything that you didn't talk about?